Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about one of my pet peeves, one of the failings that I see from the evidence-based fitness community is when they quote studies in which nobody got acceptable results, uh, particularly on strength. That's one of the ones that gets me all the time. It's like they're looking at the study and everyone got horrific results. They were really bad programs. Nobody got strong in any of the groups and then they'll use it as evidence to support something when to me particularly when they're talking about strength outcomes that's a null hypothesis and i'll give you guys an example of why this is a problem but i'm going to give you guys an example of one that was really good that we got in the last few years it actually was a good study um, and it was a study that challenged me challenged my my own conceptions right and that was the squat the full squat versus the hip thrust study and the reason i state that is that the strength gains were enormous and substantial in other words the average woman because it was a female study who finished the study was an advanced lifter on her squat by the end right they finished that study with basically advanced numbers and that's what i want to see in general for any study looking at strength now people will say well they use untrained lifters. Well, we shouldn't be using untrained lifters for, for any study looking at hypertrophy. First of all, because a lot of these are hypertrophy studies. If you are looking at untrained lifters for hypertrophy data, you can F off. Okay, I don't care. No good coach cares. And the reason is we already know how to turn untrained lifters into intermediates very, 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 very quickly. We don't need a study to tell us how to shave three days off of a process a lot of us can do in 12 weeks already okay that is not useful it's not relevant and quite frankly it produces a lot of bad data used to justify a lot of garbage and that's the problem this is stuff we already know how to do effectively in the real world without needing studies the problem is so much grant dollars and material and data and resources are wasted on untrained lifters for these studies purely so someone can pad their name on a paper or do their doctoral work and then it clutters the literature it's not particularly useful none of us who are out here trying to get jacked or stronger or anything else are untrained lifters and if you are an untrained lifter by the time you're reading studies or going to a coach you probably are trained by now right it's, it's not relevant because it's a different demographic and let's come back to the other point. We already know how to get people out of the untrained phase. We know how to push people through a novice phase. There are amazing free programs. Every coach also knows how to do it. We, we don't need data on this. We already have a really, really good idea how to do it efficiently, rapidly, and without problems. Meaning that it's not actually a problem that needs to be resolved. Okay, so that's where I'm coming from with that. So what I want to see when we look at strength outcomes is, did anybody get strong? Not did a group of, of weak pussies end up as weak pussies and one group was slightly less of a weak pussy than the other and you call it statistically relevant. Nobody got results. It's a null hypothesis. Everybody was still weak. I don't want to hear about strength outcomes. Now, the squat statistics in that particular study is one of the few where we look at it and say, oh my God, they actually got results. That's one of the reasons that it's, it's good. It's one of the reasons it's useful. Plus, it was a well-done study. Double-blind. Right? The people taking the measurements didn't know what groups the different people were in. Okay. There's a lot that went into that study that made it a really good study that really looked at things correctly of researchers didn't have bias. People collecting the data, more importantly, didn't have bias. It was double blind. And the women in one of the groups got strong, legitimately strong. That's relevant. What do I mean legitimately strong? Women who were on average squatting a one rep max of about 200 pounds below parallel because they tested them below parallel. Women on average who are squatting 200 pounds, which is already a base, right? That's that definitely trained. We're squatting on average like 270 to 275 afterwards. 
or max. And this was a study looking at both hypertrophy and strength, and they all gained substantial hypertrophy in their quads and glutes. Right? That particular group in the study did what? That group made great progress, measurable, measurable with the equipment. Their quads and glutes all got bigger, significantly bigger as measured. They all got a lot stronger. They all finished that study strong. So that was a successful training protocol. And I, I have a big problem when they take a group of men and produce a bunch of 250 and 300 pound squatters as the best group. And then evidence-based people will look at that and say, oh, well, see, we saw these strength outcomes. You didn't see strength outcomes. If I were to take a group of trained men, men who all claim to have two years of lifting experience, who know how to perform a barbell squat, which is actually heavily 90% correlated with muscle mass, by the way. Uh, we have other really good studies looking at that. The DEXA scans show that we can pretty much determine your max squat from a DEXA scan, by the way. It can be guessed within 10%. So when we talk about hypertrophy through the body versus squat weight, well, that's it's a, actually a really good estimate. The overlap is 90%. And in other words, we can take a DEXA scan. We have studies that look at 200 lifters, and the researchers were able to develop a formula to predict their max squat based upon the scans of their body, meaning their bone structure versus the amount of muscle mass on their body. They could actually predict accurately their max squats within 10%. So if they put 450, your max squat would be between 420 and four, like 470 or 480 when they test it. They had a 100% accuracy rate, I'm guessing it, within 10%. Right? So, yeah, looking at your max squat is also a massive indicator of how much muscle you gain. Now, they have a bunch of men with two years of training experience, and you run them through a 12-week program, and you test their strength, and their max squat is 270, 280, and that's the majority, and that's the best group that you produce. That is trash. That's trash. All right, I take novice lifters all the time. And in 12 weeks, get better results than that female study. In other words, guys, you're squatting 200. In 12 weeks, I'm going to have you at 300. I've taken lifters and taken them from 225, roughly squats up to 350 in, in that time frame. Without bulking them, by the way. They're, no, they're not bulking a ways to do that. Do you see the problem with, with this? And that's still novices, in my opinion. So if you have people who are trained lifters, and we don't have studies where they're all squatting 365, 405, by the end of your study, and you want to talk about strength outcomes, all right, that's baseline. Do you understand a 365 squat? is baseline for a proficient squatter for a male, maybe up to 405. That's not a strength specialization. That's not power lifting. That's the numbers that with a proper strength coach, a high school football player at age 16 should be hitting in the weight room. And I don't mean the 300 pound guy either. So the issue we have is People want to quote these studies and talk about strength gains. They want to talk about gains in anything but the bicep, right? Because, again, talking about squats and stuff here. And they'll quote these studies, and it's like, well, they didn't make any gains. Nobody made any gains. So what could you determine? That all the variables sucked? That everything that was looked at was trash? Even if you compared three different things, three different things, like you have the variable here, three different variables, four different variables. If all of them produce terrible results, and everyone is still weak, 
to null hypothesis. Quit quoting it as evidence to prove anything. It proves that everything that you looked at was bad and useless. Everything that you looked at in the study was inferior and garbage is what it determined and that you shouldn't do anything that was listed there. You have no evidence to support anything other than none of this stuff seems to work the way it was done. That's what you have. Because you have a bunch of people who don't know how to coach lifters trying to write studies. who don't know how to write training programming writing studies in this case. And everyone gets trash results. And that includes stuff done by some of these bigger names out here. I won't name names, but you guys know who I'm talking about. They don't know how to train. They're tiny and weak, and their clients, if they have any, are tiny and weak. They need to have someone else write their studies for them. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.